how to schedule posts on LinkedIn, and then some best practices on how to actually get good engagement on your LinkedIn posts. Hi, my name is Chris Casolino, and I am the co-founder and head of services at Uptown Creation, a B2B marketing and LinkedIn lead generation company. So this has been a new feature that people have wanted a long time on LinkedIn, the ability to schedule posts natively within the LinkedIn app. And finally, you know, it's rolling out at the start of 2023 to all users. I actually just got it two days ago and we are at January 15th of 2023. So this is brand new for me and very exciting. So it's really easy to do and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm also going to talk about how to make your posts better and actually get good engagement on LinkedIn. So the first thing that you're going to do is just go to LinkedIn. You can do this on your phone and you can schedule posts on desktop as well. So the first thing you'll do then is hit start post. And now next to the post button, if you have this feature, you'll see a little clock. And if you hit that clock, you're able to choose a date in the future, as well as a time, and then you can hit next. And now instead of post, that button will change to schedule. And now something that you might notice is that my posting box looks a little bit different. And that's because I'm using a, an extension that I have no affiliation with, but I think it's really good for structuring your LinkedIn posts. You're able to make text bold. You're able to use emojis. You're able to use bullet points. And the name of that extension is called Authored Up. And it's made by somebody on LinkedIn. I forgot her name, but she crushes it with content. And now to go into how to use this, I'm going to show you one of the really important pieces that this allows you to do. And that is it shows you when to click see more on posts. So if I'm scrolling through my LinkedIn feed, something that helps your post do better and helps the algorithm is the more that people hit see more to expand your post. So what that means is you need a really good hook before somebody would be able to see the rest of the post in order to get them to hit see more. So this Chrome extension that I just showed you is really effective at showing you how your post is actually going to show up on LinkedIn. And then I'll talk about some best practices for once people do click that see more of what to have in your posts in general. So going into kind of how to structure posts, that's probably the first thing that you'll want to know. And it comes down to hook story offer, or I like to call it call to action. And now you can actually see the preview on the right hand side. But if I add some more spaces, you can watch this offer or call to action go from being in the post to having to click see more to see it. So what you want is your hook to be the only thing that people can see before they have to click see more. Then you want to have your story or kind of the meat and potatoes of what you're talking about and your post. And then you want to have a really good call to action at the end that could be asking a question and getting more comments, getting more likes, getting more shares or it could be directing someplace, somebody to someplace else. Now, I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of some really top tier creators on LinkedIn, but I wanted to go through how to show you how to schedule posts and then also this Chrome extension to make it so you can actually structure your posts in the most engaging format possible. So I'm going to discard that post and now we're going to talk through a couple creators. So Samantha McKenna crushes it in content. If you don't know who that is, you should definitely check out her content. All of her posts do really well, and she is kind of an expert, in my opinion, in LinkedIn posts. So one of the posts that she made was talking about ghostwriting for LinkedIn. Now, you can see that the structure of her post starts off by having kind of that hook. Ghostwriting LinkedIn content for execs is a huge passion of mine. And then she goes into kind of the meat and potatoes by listing a ton of things that people either do wrong or that they need to be paying attention to. And then at the end kind of goes into a call to action and then has an image in her post as well. Most posts that you make, including an image is going to make them perform better. Um, and that's just kind of a good rule of thumb. If for no other reason, then it takes up more screen real estate when somebody's scrolling through the feed and any way that you can get more screen real estate, people are going to stay on your post longer and have a more, have more likelihood of engaging and sharing it and having the algorithm share your content to more people. So let's go into another post example. So this is Nate Nasrallah talking about SDRs and he actually includes 
like a little one pager of how to have SDRs be able to use a resource like this to track their pipeline. So being able to provide resources like this is another really good framework um, for having posts on LinkedIn. And you can see his call to action is getting people to kind of go to that Google Doc if they want to view it there. But again, every rep should be writing out weekly pipeline updates, but well under 10% actually do it. Standing out by using this framework today, you'll... And so this is what's going to show up before you hit see more. Then you're going to get the meat and potatoes, the bulk story, the midsection of the post. And then you're going to get the end with the call to action. So that format is really popular on LinkedIn right now. Being able to have a hook and then going into you know a pretty in-depth description showing a lot of valuable things up front. The other thing that that Chrome extension does is it counts characters. You can see that. Um, Something that LinkedIn published as what posts perform best are anywhere from 800 to 1200 characters. So pretty long. But another thing to keep in mind when you're looking at the format of people posting is that they're putting a ton of line breaks and that's going to make it so your posts are more readable on mobile as well as it just is easier on the eyes. So here's another really good example by Armand Farouk. Open-ended questions are overrated. Turn them into bucket questions. All you have to do is split your questions in half. For example, don't ask, what are your goals around rep performance? Instead, ask, typically VP, VPs of sales we talk to are either focused on ramping new reps or making existing reps more successful. What's top of mind for you? Then at the end, again, he has a call to action. What will you do? You'd either like it or comment on it. So that is a good example. And now here is another example of a post by him that I'm not clicking see more yet. You can see what is showing up first and then to click see more is where I get, you know, more of the meat to the post where I actually get what I want. Now let's go into another creator. So Nick Sajelski is another really good creator in my opinion. Um, he has a ton of great content. So if nothing else you take from this video, being able to structure your post with a good hook that gets people to click see more is an effective way to get more people engaging with your post. And then check out a lot of these creators that I'm showing you to get ideas on types of content and formatting more likely than anything. It's really important to have a good format. So you can see Nick's using these emojis kind of as bullet points to head the topics that he's talking about, then he goes more in depth into each topic and then goes on to a new one. And then at the end, again, if you've read Atomic Habits, what was the number one thing you learned? And you got 46 comments on that post. Similarly, having another post, this one actually doesn't have a call to action, it doesn't look like, but your hyper-personalized prospecting email goes unopened. Don't let all that effort go to waste. Then have to, you have to hit see more after the try this to see, change the subject line, resend that email at a later date. If you put a ton of work into it, don't let that go to waste. And then it starts a lengthy conversation with other people that are kind of in that domain and looking to make posts that just get engagement. So to recap everything that I talked about, the way to schedule posts is really simple. You just go like normal, you hit the clock, you schedule and pick a time in advance, and then it'll change to schedule instead of post. Using this Chrome extension called Offered Up, Authored Up rather, is a really good way to be able to see what your post is going to look like before it actually posts. And I highly recommend using it. And then there's a ton of creators like Samantha McKenna, Amy Volas, Florent Tatulier, Nick Sajelski, Nathan that we talked about earlier. All of those people are going to be really, really, really good people to look at their content and then format and structure your posts in a similar manner. Now that doesn't mean take their content and talk about the same exact thing. You want to talk about what you're an expert in, but you want to do it in a format that's easy to read and kind of proven already that it works on LinkedIn and people engage with it. If this video was helpful, please consider subscribing, throw a like on this video and comment any questions that you have below.